Hey guys, welcome to the Vicky Board, a cross radio design ergonomic keyboard that's soon to be launched on Indiegogo. Now for the disclaimer, I am not an ergonomics expert and I admit that I had to do some research of my own to understand why this ergonomic layout was different than what I'm typically familiar with, like the Alice layout, the tented layout or the split keyboard. And truly, if you're concerned with maintaining good ergonomics, you should tackle your issues holistically by investing in every aspect of your workspace, from your chair, to your desk, to your sitting posture. But for our purposes here, let's take a look at several factors that make the cross radio layout worth using. And then we'll dive into some other features about this board in general. Ergonomics. The Vicky board aims to solve owner deviation with its cross radio design. It's a thoughtful design, albeit difficult to get accustomed to initially, especially if you've had no previous experience with typing on any kind of ergonomic keyboard. As you can see on this keyboard, each column of keys are angled inwards in an ortholinear fashion and spread to match the different lengths and movement patterns of our fingers. This was designed to better align the natural lanes of how our fingers extend. So instead of forcing your fingers to move outwards while typing like you normally would with a straight keyboard, this layout lets each finger press on its corresponding keys with less movement and effort. It does take some getting used to though. When I place my hands on the keyboard, you'll notice that my fingers align a little bit more naturally with the keys. Compare this with a regular keyboard and I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to align. I mean, I'm still much more familiar with this typing style so it's never bothered me before, but this cross radio layout does reduce the distance each finger has to travel and make it a little bit more comfortable. I'm not gonna lie and say that I'm more comfortable in this position though, because I'm not. It's a new muscle memory that I'd have to build since I mainly type on straight keyboards. This layout also clusters the backspace, the enter, the shift, and the control key at the middle V, which requires yet another set of muscle memory to adapt to. I found myself constantly reaching for the backspace where it should be on a regular keyboard, so it has been really strange trying to make these adjustments as I try to familiarize myself with this keyboard. But the intent here is with the shift of these keys to the center is that it reduces your pinky finger's workload, leading to less owner deviation. So what is owner deviation? Well, as you type away on a straight keyboard, you'll often bend your wrist towards the little finger side of your hands in order to reach certain keys, like the backspace or the enter key. Your fingers, especially the pinky, have to stretch or deviate more than the others to reach the key, causing the wrist to bend towards the owner bone. Repetitive owner deviation can lead to strains and eventual pain in your hand and wrist, and over time it can lead to more severe conditions like carpal tunnel, tendonitis, or even permanent musculoskeletal changes. Now let's talk about what it doesn't solve for, forearm pronation. This is when your forearms do an inward twist to where your palms face down. Flat keyboards and mice require you to pronate your hands in order to make proper contact with the devices. Constant pronation can place significant strain on the muscles and tendons of your forearm and wrist and can lead to similar issues as owner deviation, including pain, inflammation, nerve compression, and musculoskeletal disorders. This keyboard lays relatively flat and doesn't offer what's called tenting, where the center of the keyboard is elevated to allow for both the wrists and the forearms to remain in a more neutral position. Some examples of ergonomic keyboards with tented designs are like the Kinesis Freestyle Edge, which is already $200 but requires an additional $30 for the tenting kit in order to elevate the metal. However, it is a wired split, which offers you more flexibility in positioning your hands and arms to a more comfortable position. Then there's the Kinesis Advantage 360, which is a full split with wireless linking, so you can have even more flexibility. Plus, it comes with an integrated tenting and palm support option. However, this one is going to break the bank for you. Then there are some other options like the Ergodox Easy, the Moonlander, and the Glove 80. And lastly, if your forearms ache, and once again I stress I am not a physiologist or an ergo expert, but my recommendation is that you evaluate the way that you are typing. The most ergonomic typing position requires that your wrist float above the keyboard as you type. Most people are relatively lazy typers and tend to rest their wrist on the desk, which then angles their wrist upwards to type, which causes more strain. Wrist rests do help in this area, but if the keyboard height is still too high, practice floating your wrist while typing. Just pretend that the desk is lava. So that's all I have on ergonomics. Let's take a look at the rest of the features of the Vicky board. This is a fully transparent CNC machined acrylic keyboard with north facing LEDs. This is the neon green, but there will be four colors to choose from during the campaign. And if you're an RGB junkie, you're gonna wanna see this.
Their PPT keycaps are nice. They're 1.4 millimeters thick. The colorway looks pretty neutral and contrasts well on this neon green board, but I bet frosted keycaps will look amazing, especially with the RGB. The Vicky board is also hot swappable, and this particular model comes with Gadron Linear Reds. They are decently looped at the stem, and while they sound decent, I recommend lubing the spring and housing as well for an even better typing experience. The plate mounted stabilizers felt solid, although I did hear some rattling from them. They're very lightly looped at the wire, so I recommend adding some loop here and some loop at the stem and housing as well. You should also clip off the uneven feet at the bottom to clear out any bottom out rattling. Here's how it sounds. Some additional information about this board. It pulls at 1000 Hz and has a battery capacity of 3000 mAh, translating to roughly 3 weeks of runtime with RGB off or around 2 days with RGB on, depending on usage. The X Plus team will be launching their campaign on Indiegogo around October 25th. I'll have a link in the description below, so definitely check them out if this is something you're interested in. They sent me this board for my honest review and feedback and to show off this board to you guys. Until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe!